There were three original dynamos. They were Judy, Catherine, and Phyllida. And what they mounted worldwide has just been amazing. Long they started with my kind of obsession with ABBA songs. I have a dream. Judy came to me and said that I have this idea. I want to do a show loosely based on ABBA songs. Jorn said, you know, I think there is, you have something here with your idea. And if you really do find the right writer, Benny and I will support you. And I found Katherine Johnson. Jude said to me, you can use the whole ABBA back catalogue. The songs did have to lend themselves to and drive the narrative. So I went home and just read the lyrics of everything. And, you know, we knew Winner was going to be in there. We knew Dancing Queen was going to be in there. But sometimes it felt like putting a very unwieldy bit of jigsaw together. And other times, like with slipping through my fingers, as soon as you think mother daughter and you've got a song like that, it's just, wow, this could only be for Mamma Mia. This intelligent, witty way that the old lyrics are used to bring the story forward. I'm Katherine Johnson's biggest fan. I am. This was definitely the musical that Benny and Bjorn didn't realize they'd written. I took the gamble, if one could call it that, the Philida had never directed a major musical, but she had directed major, highly successful opera and theatre. I quickly found out that as soon as you sang one of these songs and you put another actor listening to it, you were in a drama. So many of the songs just had this incredibly um, tight, dramatic structure, and scenes were suddenly kind of building and character around them. Even while we were making the stage show, we imagined what it might be like as a film. I had no idea I'd be the person who was actually going to direct it. And indeed, I think that Judy may have been urged by the sensible people um, to look for a proper film director. <laughs> And I think she went off and, you know, met a lot of quite venerable directors. Of course, Mamma Mia meant everything to me, but I just decided I wasn't going to let it ruin the next few years of my life if I found that Steven Spielberg was directing it. So it was a big surprise when she rang me up one day and said, Catherine and I want you to read the screenplay, and if you like it, I want you to do it. It certainly is driven by three women. And more women than that, you know. Throughout the history of the show now, there have been a lot of women involved in every capacity. I thought it was great because I always loved working with women. I remember when Judy first said to Benny and Bjorn, what do you think about having a woman director? And they said, we like that. I think maybe that's because they perhaps anticipated that the woman director would be a little more collaborative. There are no rules about these things. There's no reason why I should be any more collaborative than a male director, but I think girls are used to teamwork. Phyllida's amazing because she is... She keeps you so calm. Action. She's just such a calm person. But she takes her time and she comes up to you and gives you her notes. And I think it's very important that she started the musical as well. She directed the musical. She knows exactly what she wants. She's always demanding that we locate the real stuff in what just could be just fun. So I think that that base, operating from that base, she's where we locate ourselves. She's like our, you know, our lodestone. She's where we, where we start from. And it's a great quality in a director, that kind of sureness and certainty. It's great. It's a really interesting process for me because Phyllida works through improvisation. She works through giving the actors a lot of space which in a sort of way is the antithesis of choreography. Because choreography, in a way, is you come in there and you go, OK, everybody, five, six, seven, eight, here we go, bish, bash, bosh, boom, 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 and you've done it, and you've created the picture. Whereas Phyllida's way of working is she talks a lot and develops character, and then the whole process goes in that way. We have women running the show. It's just so beautiful and so easy and so comfortable and, and really pleasant. It's the kind of energy that wouldn't be there if they weren't there. Even though 
Lola Lloyd hadn't directed a major motion picture before. Katherine Johnson maybe hadn't written a major screenplay. Those were just non-starter questions or things to think about because they know exactly what Mamma Mia is. There's a sort of a confidence between the three of us and a trust. Judy is a brilliant producer in that she really understands about process. She's been brilliant at putting teams together and letting them get on with it. There's a feeling of you're the director, you're the designer, you're the writer, do it and I will be there to have a critical eye, but not like hovering. And Catherine is also, you know, a fantastic collaborator. She's very unprecious about her writing. There's a point beyond which she can't be pushed when she knows that, you know, that ceases to be Mamma Mia if you push us over that line. Catherine conceived the dynamos. She didn't base them on us, but there is one amongst us who is quite high maintenance and who needs, you know, a lot of luggage when she goes on holiday. <laughs> and then there's one amongst us who, you know, holds the fort while everything's crumbling around her ears. Once you put Phyllida into the sort of director's role, she has to be done as she is in charge. I've been running this hotel for 15 years and I have never had a day off. And I've always felt that Rosie was very much based on me. You know, she's the one who kind of scuttles along behind making um, rude comments about everybody. I bet you don't remember me. Not with all that plastic surgery. <laughs> That, that's more me than anyone else. Mamma Mia was created by three women, and it is about three women. And there was never any intention to be banging any feminist drama in any way, but it, it is a kind of zeitgeist of, of women today. It defines mood and spirit. I was cheated by you, and I think you know when. It is about women that broken hearts, work hard for a living, have been married several times. You see built into it, there's something just very forgiving about being human and being female and all the things that go with it. Things women understand. These women have created their own world, their own life force, and we guys are just the chicks. We three men, we are doing what usually is reserved for women in male films. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Mama Mia, here I go again. My, my, how can I resist ya? Mama Mia. Does it show again? My, my, just how much I missed ya. That is not unfamiliar to me, I have to say. It's, I've been there before. You know, the Jane Austen world is something you could say is similar. Bridget Jones films and, and seen through a woman's eyes. So they tend to sort of wheel me in when they need, you know, someone to you know, be the side sellers. What do you suggest we do with three men? <laughs> <sighs> Well, then now that takes me back. So often we say there aren't roles for women and women aren't doing, you know, don't matter enough in the industry and why aren't there stories about women? Well, this is it. This is an example of a woman with a vision for 10 years who said, there's something here in this musical. And she was right. This thing is an international success. It plays all over the world in all different languages. It's unusual for the stage and certainly for Hollywood to find such roles for women in the middle age, later middle age, whatever is politically correct to say these days. Post 45. <laughs> I always say this movie is like a tribute to Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty. There's really something fundamentally joyous and sensuous and kind of erotic about this movie that people connect to on a deep level. And I do think a lot of it is feminine energy.